And I just gotta say, Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut is a pretty fucking stupid name for a sport. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? And I mean, I do have a few little nitpicks, like Sonic's weird hot dog shoes. <laughs> God, are we talking about the cars? The cars? And there are a few minor mistakes, like they made this monorail animation invisible. Bro, he's not mentioning how this is pink. You know, I'll never forget just how impressed I was the first time I saw Sonic Adventure. It was the first Dreamcast game I had ever seen, and it completely blew me away. Obviously it goes without saying that by today's standards, the graphics are not that impressive. Whenever I look at this game, part of me will always see it through the eyes of a child who had never seen a game that looked this good. To this day, I still think the game looks great. I really dig yes, the sir, overall aesthetic that and art threshold. So I was a bit disappointed when some so years I gotta later get you I another played four. it again on GameCube and it didn't look quite as good as I remembered. I figured I must just be remembering it wrong. Graphics were advancing rapidly during this time period, so it probably only seemed worse by comparison to these newer games. It was only recently I went back and checked it. No, it's not just me. The GameCube version actually does look worse. Um... When you play these games back to back, it's easy to notice tons of little differences and redesigns on When you play- Did I agree with that? I don't know. I just don't know if I fully agree with- I mean, yeah, I, I feel like Dreamcast probably looks better. It's easy to notice tons of little know. differences and redesigns on GameCube. I did some independent research trying to get to the bottom of the situation. Okay, actually, Loki, I, I, when you look at Eggman, you can kind of see it. Maybe it's just because I grew up on the DX version. That's it. But I found myself overwhelmed. Like, literally, this was, the DX version was literally one of my first games. Maybe it's because I just grew up on the GameCube version. The amount of difference it looks so normal to me. Differences between the games. I began to wonder why. Like, I didn't even know what the Dreamcast version looked like until, like, 2010 or something when it came out on steam or whatever i don't know or maybe i've seen it in a youtube video whatever i hadn't anyone documented all this before i was starting to get really into it that's when i went online discovered it actually has been documented before numerous i think tails looks all right in the dx version though times. the so again, tails for real. decent list of changes but the best site by far is this one blog the ultimate guide to sonic adventure dx sins by a dude who goes by the name pkr Remember, kids, the lesson here is never do anything yourself, because someone out there on the internet has probably already done it way better than you can. Facts. What you should do is find that Don't thing and then the wheel, chat. Or, if you're a coward like me, you can ask for permission first. <laughs> this site is incredibly thorough and Nah, w, 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 uh, integrity, cybershell. Complete with screenshots and even some videos for comparison. Nah, I thought DX was the OG SA1. <laughs> Low key, yeah, I didn't think it was. I just thought the game was called Sonic, Sonic Adventure DX. I didn't realize the DX for part meant, you know. I mean, honestly, if you're interested in the differences between Sonic Adventure. No palette, diffuse palette. And Sonic Adventure D oh, now this DX. is just a bunch of computer graphics info. So you should just go read about it on this site. Don't it, it a <laughs> Don't innovate. I I it's, it's a balance. It's a balance. It's a balance. You gotta innovate some places. Other places, like you know, don't even don't reinvent the wheel. You know. Assuming people still have the attention spans to actually go to a website and read a thing. No, in today's age, people need information mashed up and regurgitated to them like little baby birds. I'm not gonna cover every change listed on the site. Just the ones that really. And nowadays, you need it chopped up in a. 20 seconds short for people to digest it. <laughs> stood out to me, which happened to be a lot of them. Anyway, in case anyone isn't familiar with- Well, our attention spans are getting weak. I'm sorry for pausing, but like, our attention spans are getting weak, bro. We can't even watch full YouTube videos no more. This video in like YouTube short format, most of y'all would be watching that instead of this video. Me though, we we giving you all the watch time. I'm, I'm sorry, I am. I don't know about this chat. They gonna watch the short, but me, I would give you all that watch time, my boy. With the whole DX situation, Sonic Adventure originally came out for the Dreamcast in December 1998 in Japan, while North America was released in September of 99. The game was remastered and ported to the GameCube in June of 2003. Oh wow, the, the American Sonic version came out first. That's Adventure kind DX of director's cut. That's somewhat rare. <laughs> so far, at least. The ports served as the basis for the Xbox 360 and PS3 ports of the game, and these ports. No, nah, wait, yeah. Since when did, did I thought like Japanese versions always came like first?
most of the time. ...are used as the basis of the version released on Steam in 2011. Each of these ports introduces some new issues and glitches, however most of the major changes in remastering happened during the original port of the game to the GameCube, so most of the comparisons will be between the Dreamcast and GameCube versions, with occasional references made to effects looking even worse on PC or discussing some PC-exclusive problems. When it comes to the actual game itself, although it has some flaws, I still think it's a really fun game. However, that's not what this video is about. I literally do not have time to get into my whole Sonic Adventure apologetics routine today. I mean, when you think about something like the carton of milk aging, the actual thing itself turns sour and rotten. With a video game, the game itself is the one thing that isn't changing, it's society and our expectations and all that shit. Luckily, whether you think Sonic Adventure is a good game or not actually doesn't matter. You should still agree Why with not? the fundamental point that a remaster should, you know, improve the game, or at the very least not make it any worse. Let me just make this mm. abundantly clear. If you never played the Dreamcast version and only played DX growing up, then this is not a personal attack on you. All right. You don't need to defend your version's honor. Hey, I'm not even trying to defend it. I'm just trying to explain like how because of the fact that I grew up on the DX version, I genuinely can't see the, you know, how it regressed. I, I genuinely can't see it because this right here is my normal. This is what like I, I grew up on this. So I can't see the downgrades unless it's like read out to me in a blog, I guess. If you didn't have a frame I'm not denying it, I'm just saying like my naked eye, you know, it doesn't jump out at me. Reference to compare it to, then obviously most of this stuff wouldn't bother you. Right. I'm just giving my opinion as someone who played the Dreamcast version first. I bet. You feel free to disagree with me and prefer the See if y'all play the Dreamcast version first, I can see why y'all think the DX version looks like total doo-doo garbage now. DX version all you want, and I anticipate many of you will. I'm gonna preempt this by saying yes. A whole lot of the changes I'm about to discuss are fairly minor points that when taken on their own really do not significantly impact the quality of the game, but this is really a death by a thousand paper cuts type scenario. It's only when you look at the totality of all the changes can you really see the issue. I see. By the way, this isn't really that important all things considered, but I just gotta say, Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut is a pretty fucking stupid name for a sport. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? <laughs> Hey, RT, you know that reference. <laughs> but yeah, the fact they said DX Director's Cut, a little redundant. It was a little confusing for me as a kid. I mean, did it really need to be Deluxe and a Director's Cut? I mean, it's just called Sonic Adventure Deluxe in Japan. Why did they feel the need to add Director's Cut to the title for the Western Director's release? Cut. And if it was necessary, why couldn't they have dropped the DX from the title and just called it Sonic Adventure Director's Cut? Well, that wouldn't have worked because then it would have been SADC and then what would we call the fucking Dreamcast version? <laughs> what the fuck does Director's Cut even mean anyways? It's a I film don't know. term, right? I mean, I know some games use it. It's not that uncommon to see in a video game title. But I mean, with a name like Director's Cut, you might imagine there'd be literally any kind of change to the story or something, like maybe some added cutscenes or story content. There's literally nothing like that in this game. So who was the director of Sonic Adventure 1? Takashi Izuka. So what, is this his cut or something? Like his original vision? Well, oh, it's okay. Alright, you're dragging it. Translation error. Move on. Oh no, he's not even the director of the DX version. Oh, when we said director's cut, we didn't mean the original director's cut, obviously. Okay, let's not beat around the bush. The right. Does have some <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that was a pointless rant. You know good and well, Cybershow. It was just a translation error or something along those lines, like... Improvements on the Dreamcast version. I mean, it came out four and a half years later on superior hardware. You'd expect there to be some technical improvements. Let's start with the big two. <laughs> DX lets you skip cutscenes and it runs at 60 FPS compared to the Dreamcast version's 30. Skipping yep. cutscenes is definitely a nice feature to have. Yep. I mean, personally, if I'm replaying SA1, 60 frames. I'm really watching those cutscenes. Every Sonic game should be 60 frames, or it's bad. Or anything psychotic like that. Similarly, for 60 FPS, it is an inarguable improvement. However, it's worth pointing out that this improved frame rate was simply due to the improved hardware. And the GameCube version often struggles to maintain 60 FPS, while the Dreamcast version, at least for the most part, was maintaining a solid 30. Well, obviously, of course. Nothing game-breaking or anything like that, but some animations play faster than they should, like Tails, Tails, and the Tornado in Windy Valley. The most famous issue stemming from the frame rate is probably the behavior of this badnik, Leon. In the DX version, he appears. I didn't know this badnik had a name. Fast, he rarely has time to get an attack out. 
This can be annoying when he's holding one of the emerald shards in Lost World. Next, let's take a look at the extra content. I'm not gonna lie. Skill issue. And in the DX version, collecting respectfully a number of Game Gear Sonic games. This is the Sorry, first maybe time some games like Sonic Drift and Tail Sky Patrol were officially released in the West. This is a pretty cool feature, especially back in 2003 for someone like me who didn't even have a Game Gear. It's certainly better than the yeah late 20s, I'd like say for Dreamcast people. Game, which is nothing. However, that I feel said, like at the end Cyber of the day, shows a that age runs. range. Not exactly a groundbreaking feature. If I wanted to play these games nowadays, I just emulate them on PC. Not to mention these are only the Game Gear versions of these 8-bit games. For some of these, you should really be playing the Superior Master System versions. Another new addition is the Mission Mode. These 60 optional side missions aim to give players some new things to do in the adventure. Oh. I feel like he's gonna have something bad to say about Mission Mode. Fields and action stages. The only problem is, to put it bluntly, most of these missions are fucking terrible. I knew it, bro. Oh my gosh. What were you supposed to do? It's the most hideous and uninspired shit you can <laughs> imagine. Go to the burger shop statue and bring it here. Nah, that was fun. <laughs> Go get the balloon. That's not tedious. You just do a whole homie attacks. Collect 100 rings. Like, wow, so exciting. All right, all right, all right, bro. It's better than nothing like the drink has version has. Which brings me to another point. Don't a lot of like Sonic game missions have like collect 100 rings? These missions include stupid ads. Sonic X. Wait, Sonic 06 was in this? How? It is a DX drop 2003. Oh, this must be PC. Yeah, this is a PC version, but. What do you mean, stupid advertisements? They're little Easter eggs, cameos, what? Like shit, man, I don't want to see pictures of Chris Thorndike. Get that shit out of here. Ah, right, nah, I ain't gonna lie, you hating now, Cypher Shell. You hating, bro. That's a W cameo. As a kid, I, I really was like, yo, Sonic X. Like, come on, my boy. Look at this shit. Who is Chow a good friends with? And what is it? Who is a Chow good friends with? And underneath it. What? Oh. You have to dig in front of the picture of Cream. One nah, bro is hating. I'm not gonna lie. I hate that. <laughs> bro is hating on the mission mode. This dark and filthy place. Can you find it? To complete this one, you have to find Cream's billboard in the sewers. Why am I rescuing a picture of Cream on a billboard? The DX version actually has a model for Cream. They included a cameo of her flying around Station Square. Yep. It looks fine on GameCube, but in the PC version, the texture is all fucked up. That's true. Actually, a whole lot of these missions seem to involve the burger shop statue. Like this one where you have to save him from drowning. <laughs> Why was he Only there? Only Metal Sonic needs a friend. There's even one where you have to take him through part of Sky Deck. A fugitive That's has funny. escaped from the jail of burning hell. Find the fugitive. What in the fuck? Oh, we're talking about one of these weird guys from the jail part of Red Mountain. Some of these are mildly amusing, like cutting the weeds outside Tails' right. house. Right, see? But the vast majority Fun. of them are just go to the thing. Again, this is totally an optional side content. I know it doesn't really That's make That's what it I'm saying! Like, you don't, ain't nobody making you do this! The game any worse just by existing, but it doesn't really make it any better either. If you manage to collect every single emblem... Chai, how y'all feel about mission mode? Emblem, ...a very tedious task, DX rewards you with a playable Metal Sonic. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Metal Sonic as much as the yes, next sir. Guy. Playable Metal is pretty cool in my book. And like I said earlier, something is better than the nothing you get for collecting emblems in the Dreamcast version. Yup. But I mean, let's be real, it's just an alternate skin for Sonic. Oh my gosh, here y'all go. What does that mean? So you want them to introduce a whole new play style in a port? Because if Metal Sonic had different mechanics, He'd probably break half the levels. I don't know, bro. It's not even a new model. It's from Sonic Adventure 2 Battles Multiplayer. Overall, it's a... Um, it's starting to feel nitpicky, Loki. I'm not gonna lie. Neat bonus, but it's not that amazing. Bro, anything good that DX does, he's just like, oh, that's, just, that's not that great. Oh, not totally amazing. I guess that's cool, but it's not like that great. Bro, 
I don't know, man. As for the Chow Garden, the system in DX is definitely more robust, carrying over changes from Sonic Adventure 2 and Battle. Yup. The original Dreamcast version of the Chow Garden was more like a tech demo by comparison. Yup. So DX definitely wins here, okay. again by virtue of carrying over improvements made in other games. Even that he managed to discredit. I'm sorry, like, nah, bro. We're not even 10 minutes in yet. But don't worry, I'll talk more about Chow later. Okay. Another supposed improvement in DX is the character models. Instead of using the original Dreamcast models, it uses updated models based on their appearance from Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. There's no denying the models are technically more detailed. Yep. They have higher poly counts. For example, their hands have clearly defined digits instead of the mittens with textures from the DC version. Yeah. Which is nice. Although Amy's hands kind of look weird if you really stare at them. I'm telling y'all, I think the DX models are not the, not the, not the lighting, not the lighting. The lighting be having them all look like a bunch of doo-doo plastic. But the actual models to me, in my humble opinion, do look better. This is one of those subjective matters, but I personally prefer the look of the Dreamcast models. Being a little shorter and closer to the Genesis proportions make the transition into longer-legged modern Sonic more gradual. Personal I don't think preference. The Sonic Adventure 2 models look bad or anything. In fact, I think they look just fine in Sonic Adventure 2. I just like the Sonic Adventure 1 models for Sonic Adventure 1. I don't see why we can't have both. And I mean, I do have a few little nitpicks, like Sonic's weird hot dog shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. <laughs> no joints is she like hot dog. Look. <laughs> nah, that's actually funny. You see that? Like, why are they so smooth like that towards, like, the the front? <laughs> Hot dog shoes is crazy. Not quite as cool as the soaps from Sonic Adventure 2. Okay. In addition to her weird hands, Amy's shoe texture just looks like shit. <laughs> no. No, he said so these sentences. Sonic Adventure 2 model actually looks kind of jarring next to the lower poly echidna citizens. His original model actually looked kind of similar. With Knuckles, you can definitely see how the original models had some kind of grain to their textures. This was done on purpose to simulate fur. Again, I guess this is one of those aesthetic yeah. preference things, but I definitely prefer this approach to the completely smooth, plasticky look the 3D series ended up going with for the next few games. Even Personal in the preference. DX version, there are still a few instances you can find of them using the Dreamcast models. Like when Amy gets picked up by Zero or in the tutorial screen. Wait, really? Of them using the Dreamcast oh, facts. Models. Like when Amy gets picked up by Zero, or in the tutorial screens, or in the final credit screens. Some of the models are barely any different. Like Gamma and Big look basically the same. Yeah. I mean, technically Big has a higher poly count, but can you seriously tell at all? No. Eggman only had his hands updated, and he arguably needed an update the most. His SA1 model is not very detailed. Another change I don't care for is Super Sonic. He lost his cool golden reflective sheen and now just looks like a deep yellow piss color. <laughs> Y'all remember the fan dub? Whoa, Shadow, you're dehydrated, buddy. <laughs> his foot is also uh. clipping outside his sheen and now just looks like a deep yellow piss color. <laughs> his foot is also clipping outside his aura or whatever. In the Dreamcast uh. version, Sonic's light speed dash aura was less bright, which made it look less like a weird jagged solid object. Okay. Similarly, Knuckles maximum heat aura looks fine on Dreamcast, but it looks kind of fucked up on GameCube. And okay. really fucked up on PC for some Ooh. reason. An interesting effect in the Japanese version of SA1 was when Sonic was running at top speed, his feet would stretch out. Dang. And they were rendered multiple times. Them really look like hot dog feet. There's various transparencies to simulate motion blur. For whatever reason, they've removed this transparency effect in later releases, although you can still see the stretchy foot effect in the US version. In DX, there is no stretchy foot effect, although the coding for it is still present. And Interesting. Like glitch when Sonic reaches top speed, the textures on his buckle and the bottom of his shoe switch. <laughs> this effect is even visible on the Steam page Dang. in the first official screenshot. L Steam. Tails has a similar effect. When he's running at top speed, multiple instances of his tails are generated with transparencies for motion blur. In the DX version, they kept the multiple copies of his tails, but they removed the transparency. They didn't make them trans. Okay, that's an L. That's a that's a small that's a small little L, making him look like he's the nine tails or something. In the DX version, they kept. God, bro, looking like he's a nine-tailed fox instead of Miles Tails Prower the fox. The multiple copies of his tails, but they removed the transparency effects. That's tough. Which makes it look odd. 
that's right. okay nah nah that's okay that's a that's an l i'll admit that one's an l overall the texture quality is just much worse than the dx versions okay you can read more about the technical details oh, minecraft the specific reasons why they look so bad over on the blog it's pretty interesting well that's the thing though if i have to read about why textures look bad instead of just being able to tell from looking at them i'm sorry it's not that deep stuff i just don't feel like trying to explain what mit maps are right now one of the other major issues DX has is with transparency. Many Dreamcast textures have been altered in order to remove parts that might have had difficulty rendering properly. However, the biggest downgrade in DX has to be the lighting system. Fair. This is another case where I'm not even going to try to explain the finer technical points. You're going to have to read about it yourself if you want to know the details. But the short version is the DX has completely fucked up the lighting system and made the entire game look worse. The yeah. lighting in the original game was actually pretty impressive for a 1998 game. In fact, in pre-release footage, it had even more impressive and dynamic lighting, but apparently it had to be scaled back for hardware-related reasons. Mm -hmm. well, let me see that. Lighting, but apparently it had to be oh, scaled that, back. that lighting looks... In fact, in pre-release footage, it had... Ooh, that lighting looks even nice. Even more impressive and dynamic lighting. Especially in this game I've seen here. But apparently it had to be scaled back for hardware-related reasons. They could have expanded on that in the DX version, but they messed it all up. When it comes to audio quality, DX is mostly okay. There are some issues and a few missing sound effects and whatnot throughout the game, but it's not that bad. However, in the original scammed us with the trailer. Report, the voice lines eh. were converted to WMA files and they were This should have brought it back in DX for some reason. This is the adventure mode. Start your adventure here. This is the adventure mode. Start your adventure. Low muffled, low muffled. This was fixed in the Steam version, thankfully. Okay. Let's start by taking a look at the adventure fields. In Station Square, the iconic clock tower was replaced with some kind of generic looking building seemingly- Iconic clock tower? Was it iconic? There's a- just having a little- actually low-key nah, because in Speed Highway, it was- at the end of that level was- had the clock tower, so... I guess you could actually make that as a fair point. ...for no reason. This change has always baffled me, because not only does it look worse and just less distinctive in general, it actually fucks with a cool little piece of continuity. There this it is, yeah. Is no, I, okay, I agree with that. If it weren't for Speed Highway, then I wouldn't care. But yeah, the fact that it messes with the continuity, that could have been cool. That could have been cool for real. So I agree with you here. The same building you see at the end of Speed Highway right. where you enter is numbers. Right, right. I'm not sure why they went out of their way to make the game world make less sense, but it's apparently worth changing in their book. I key. All of the windows, which has several reflection textures with distortions that reacted to camera movement on Dreamcast, have been replaced with boring static textures. This is going to be a recurring theme. The DX version unable to handle complex reflections or transparencies, and instead opting for simplistic. You probably did that for optimization reasons. Downgrades. The loss of palette lighting makes the three different times, day, evening, and night, look worse too. For example, nighttime lacks the bluish tint it's supposed to have. The DX actually fixes a minor mistake from the Dreamcast version. Originally, the time of day would affect the color of the lighting in the sewers, which doesn't really make any sense. Right. Let's take a look at the shoreline area. Some people might not care for the lower resolution water texture animation on Dreamcast. DX has this weird bright area where the sand meets the water, which looks almost acidic in the PC version. Ugh. On Dreamcast, the color of the sea changed depending on the time of day. In DX, the evening looks alright, but the sea looks weirdly lit up at night. Some people might prefer the more realistic looking car textures in DX yes. and the incredibly shiny cars in the Dreamcast version, yes. but I personally prefer the original here. The Bro, what, do, what, what do you prefer from the DX version? Do you prefer anything from the DX version? <laughs> I feel like a lot of Dreamcast fans just, they y'all just so happen to prefer everything that the Dreamcast version did. Is that coincidence? Like y'all can't give the DX versions one thing, you know? Like the car, are we talking about the cars? The, 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 the cars? So you mean to tell me, okay, you don't like how shiny the character models look in the DX, but when the car models are shiny, it's cool? The cars in the Dreamcast version look so wacky. Shiny cars in the Dreamcast version, but I personally prefer the original here. The police car flashers definitely look worse in the DX version. Okay, fair. Because they lack their transparency. Yeah, fair. In the Dreamcast version, the pool chairs have an almost unnoticeable transparency effect which has been removed in DX. How dare they downgrade these beautiful pool chairs. There's also a strange bug in DX where the crosswalk texture is drawn on top of Sonic's shadow. The textures of the newsstand are worse and stretched out for some reason. 
and the building next to the newsstand was also redesigned to add some new signs. Not a bad idea, although this SS Books sign is terrible quality and attached to clearly not a bookstore. The DX version also adds a giant Casino Ken sign, which isn't the best quality. It's just a flat texture compared to the actual Casinopolis entrance, which is fully modeled. For whatever reason, the lighting uh, it's in still an addition. the hotel is always rendered as if it was daytime, which just looks awful at night. Mystic okay. Ruins also received a redesign. Yeah, actually daytime, fair. Which just looks awful at night. Low-key fair. Mystic Ruins also received a redesign, with the DX version being noticeably less green. For whatever reason, in the PC version, the lighting of this area is also completely broken. At nighttime, the stage is still rendered way too brightly. Okay, yeah. The part Wait, nah, let's see that SpongeBob bean. At nighttime, the stage is still rendered way too brightly. Okay, low key, low key, alright. <laughs> low key, okay, nah, that's a W roast. That's, that's a good meme. That's a good meme. <laughs> okay, nah, this is funny. This is funny, actually. Oh my gosh, that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> I like this meme. That's a good one. That's a good one. The part of the that's rock which eventually <laughs> blows up to reveal the path to Angel Island is more noticeable in the DX versions, particularly the PC version, which really stands out. Okay, yeah, that was dumb. Other problems. That was dumb. The Angel Island area was redesigned to remove many of the decorations, like most of the trees. For whatever reason, the Master Emerald Shrine has some details and objects removed as well. This is a minor point, but the Master Emerald's pulsating green glow effect is more noticeable and vibrant in the Dreamcast version. Yeah. Uh, the Ice Cap area had its blue coloration dulled down a bit. They also changed this plant, simplifying it a bit and removing this fern-like part which had a transparency effect. Yes, those bastards actually thought they could just remove the ferns from Sonic Adventure and they'd get away with it without getting called out. The jungle area looks worse on DX2. The top of the jungle you I don't know about this one. I feel like the sky background looks better in Dreamcast, but besides that, I feel like everything else just looks more a little more like realistic looking on the DX version. And in the PC version, you can clearly see the outline of the paths you can walk. The okay, PC yeah. version also uses the area's fog effect in I don't see a problem with that. It's only supposed real. to be there when you descend into the jungle. For some strange reason, all the animations on Big House have been Yeah, that one looks better on DX. And it remains completely static at all times. Okay, fair. The final egg base model also has transparency issues, particularly with the light beams which go behind the glow effect. Fair. The lighting inside the base is also noticeably worse, removing the original's greenish tint. The tubes containing the metal sonics also look worse and are harder to see through. Fair. In the Tikal flashbacks, the area near the Master Emerald has just incredibly- <laughs> This little island looks like a cinnamon bun for some reason. ...bizarrely deep blue water. That's Arguably weird. Arguably an improvement over the simple texture from the Dreamcast version, but it's so blue it even appears blue Ugh. in the flashbacks when the area is on fire, when the color palette is supposed to be basically all red. In the Dreamcast version, the water in the shrine near the emerald reflects certain objects like the palm tree and columns by using transparent objects. This effect was removed in the DX version. The worst okay. downgrade in the DX version is the fire. In the original game, the lighting flickered by transitioning between two palettes to create a striking fire effect. But that's not how fire works. So when does fire cause a flickering effect every like half second? That's not how fire works. The DX version has no such feature. And the PC version is full of this gross. That's not how fire fog. looks. Character lighting also received a heavy. Okay, yeah, the lighting light. looks better the atmosphere in Dreamcast. The considerably dulled in the DX version. The egg carrier didn't receive much of a redesign compared to the other two adventure fields. The lighting changes means it lost its slight purple tint. And there are a few yeah. minor mistakes, like they made this monorail animation invisible. They removed the animation on the captain's seat, and the okay. green barriers on the doors don't display for some reason. Are you gonna mention how the things are pink? No, cause it's Dreamcast. But apart from Sorry, nah. No, nah, but like, he's not making a big deal out of that, you know? Stand. And there are a few minor mistakes, like they made this monorail animation invisible. Bro, he's not mentioning how this is pink! They removed the animation on the captain's seat. And the green barriers on the doors don't... Okay, no, 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 now if this... no nah, guys, chat, chat, be real. If they had this mistake on the GameCube version, he 100% would have brought it up. ...display for some reason. But apart from the overall standard lighting downgrades, there's not too much to complain about here, so let's get into the action stages. Oh, I didn't even explain... Mm. Before going over Emerald Coast, I need to explain the changes DX made to the... Uh, I don't know about water. that green water in... Dream, uh, DX. ...underwater distortion effect. 
Though it is a little distracting, and it makes some of the Big's underwater sections kind of annoying. Okay, the fair. The Dreamcast version uses a simple blue tint to convey the feeling of being underwater. I like However, that, yeah. This distortion effect is only in the GameCube version. PC ports of DX keep the new surface textures, but have no distortion or blue tint underwater. Yeah, I don't like that. Kind of odd. Yeah. While some may prefer the GameCube's distortion effect to the simple way of handling water in the DX version, the effect is not perfect. In addition to distorting things under the water, it also appears on objects in front of it, which creates a very bizarre looking effect. So okay. let's take a look at the ocean in Emerald Coast. The Dreamcast version uses a simple animated water DX texture. version looks better. The GameCube version has multiple layers, including its natural water distortion effect. See, that's the thing. The water alone probably costs a lot computationally. Ground during the Emerald Coast loop. Yep. I've seen this so many times. I would say this is the most infamous glitch in the entire game. And For sure. And it doesn't even happen in the Dreamcast version. Nice. In Windy Valley, a lot of that's kind of crazy, of actually. Are missing. Nah, that's actually crazy if you think about it. That's like the one glitch that, like, that's like the one glitch that people pull out to be like, oh, Sonic didn't transition well to 3D. But the fact is, it wasn't even in the original version. <laughs> like, right, floors don't exist in DX. Like a bunch of the wind turbines. That's the crazy. The version has a dynamic fog system. It added a glitch. When the tornado <laughs> shows up. This effect is broken. And then the that DX. glitch pretty much ruined. That glitch like single-handedly tainted Sonic Adventure's reputation for a while. Sports. That's wild. The slight gray fog is also missing from inside the tornado too. Certain textures are missing in the DX version, allowing you to see through some objects. And the ropes on the bridge are also way too long for some reason. Oh wow. There's color banding visible in all versions of the sky in Act 3, but it's more noticeable on GameCube and looked absolutely fucking dreadful on PC. This area right here is a good example of how much better the Dreamcast can handle transparencies. Look at the edges of the grating. Somehow it looks even worse on the PC too. The area's white fog effect was also made darker. In the original game, the Chaos Emeralds had a glowing effect which is completely missing in the DX ports. Weird. For Casinopolis, the most noticeable changes are just in terms of the lighting. Notice the slight okay. violet coloration on Sonic's model in the original version and the more complex lighting transitions on his model. Looking around, certain objects have lost their animation for seemingly no reason, like the roof of the Knight's pinball entrance. Once again, you can see the Chaos Emerald's missing glow effect. The DX version continues to struggle with transparencies. True. The PC Wait. version. The DX version continues to struggle with transparencies. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. The PC version in particular has issues displaying the slot and pinball sign. The shiny shower room sign was replaced with an ugly low resolution texture. <sighs> and similarly, the information sign has lost its reflective element on GameCube and is nearly unreadable on PC. The gear area and knuckle stage is actually broken on the PC version. One Ooh. of these spinning cylinders is missing its top texture. Tough. Look at the giant lion statue on the second Ooh, floor. Ooh, the lion statue looks kind of tough in the Dreamcast version. Apart from the standard lighting and texture downgrades, the pinball boards are mostly okay. Watch, okay. So the lighting in the night's area isn't quite right on DX. Now let's take a look at the sewers. This area actually has quite a different feel in the DX version. For whatever reason, it appears to have a white fog added, giving it a worse straw distance. The water is clear instead of green and has no animation in the DX version. On GameCube it had the natural distortion effect, but on PC it has nothing. The lights in the sewers were supposed to blink and flicker, but that right. happens on the Dreamcast version. Alright, nah, Loki. Alright, nah, Loki, now I'm getting bored. Now I'm getting bored, Loki, like, you feel me? I wanted, like, an actual, like, I don't know, argument as to why it was a bad port. I didn't just want an analysis on all the little minor changes on different textures that arguably looked worse. It's a good video. It's a good video. I just feel like wasn't what I really was looking for. I don't think I'm gonna watch the rest though. Yeah, it's funny how it tends to go. One day destroy half the moon, then that's where you vote. Three days up, you gotta roll. Now there's blood, don't eat your soul. Let me switch it up. Free melee, we ain't Nintendo. Rise and shine. Come on, so someone went on the last. Make other journeys, we're having a blast. Balance the stream in the cart. One's gonna crash.